I think it's time for another Goldlands Peak update. Um, this is, of course, the park I have been working on for a while there. Here, um, this park has gotten huge very quickly here, and I'm just gonna freeze it for a sec, just to... Uh, sunny here. And then freeze it. Because I don't want it to go to... Rainstorm there. Um, so... We're gonna go around the park here. You've already seen some of this area here with the prosecutor over here. Then you've got a uh, mountain forest flyer, I'm sorry, and the water ride here all the way around here. You've seen all this, a lot of it. Also, I don't know if you've seen this. This is Ghost Town Haunted Mine. You probably have. Um, the first thing I did afterward was start work on this side of the park. So the first thing I added was production line. This is kind of like a Victorian factory themed. Uh, here. Also, I did expand the railway, because you'll see up here, this is a major section of the park over here. I'm not exactly happy with the way this turned out, but it's the best I could do with production line here, because I just added this railroad station. Green. That's it. The next coaster I built, and this is kind of after a modern interpretation of King's Island's Vortex. You have Aero Fighter, aptly named for Aerodynamics, I've called it. I couldn't think of a better name for it, but it uh, is a five inverting um, aero looping coaster with Vekoma trains on it. Uh, so it's going to go through those two loops, through two up uh, scale corkscrews. There's your brake run around there. It does a couple of helixes, another corkscrew, and then a final helix. I then went up here next and started work on my first real themed area. I mean, the whole park's frontier themed, but this is kind of like a metropolitan section over here. You've got Insane Ironworks, a more shown spinning coaster. You know, I just gotta leave this on freeze. Um, um, so, Insane Ironworks is kind of a short little. Uh, what is it? It's a short little one. Uh, Mars own spinning coaster. It goes up there, down, around just a little bit there. And then up here you've got a couple of flat rides. This is Skyflyer and Constable. Um, and then over here you've got uh, this section's main coaster here. This is Metroliner which is an intimate mega coaster, kind of like a custom mega light here. And it goes down into this valley here, and I'll get to this coaster in a second, because this is actually the most favorite coaster around, is that wooden coaster there. Uh, also, bus stop is in there, and then a skate park. Um, this section, I, I kind of want to do a little bit more with it. I think I'm going to get rid of this path, actually, right as I speak here, because I don't like it very much. Um, I like the other path better. It's a little bit less confusing. Silly path network here. Um, it's not the most popular ride that mountain lion coaster that I'll show you in a second, but it is. This actually is one of the more popular ones. Metro Liner is. My next coaster down here was Moon was Moonlight Moonshine Company. This is a Gershlauer Eurofighter, and um, it's a kind of quadruple launch because there's a little thing there, and it is a very high speed. It seems like bootleggers and moonshine runners. I really kind of like this coaster. There was supposed to be a little bit more theming to it, and I might add a bit, but I kind of uh, got sick of it working on it, but I kind of like how the ride turned out, so. And then there's this coaster, Mountain Lion. Mountain Lion is the guest favorite, I think, out of all the coasters that people like it the most. It is basically an out-and-back intimate wooden coaster that, uh, zips through there. Then after Mountain Lion, I started working on the biggest project in the park yet, and that's kind of infrastructure-wise. I built a path over here, and then we have our B&M Giga Coaster. So we have our B&M Hyper Coaster here, that's a Star Forger, and Centurion is our B&M Giga Coaster, even though it does not have a drop of 300 feet. 
actually technically BM only has um uh, hyper coasters, so technically, but this is a 300 foot hyper coaster, 330 foot actually. So as you see, it goes down there, it goes 97 miles an hour, and you just see as it, uh, it's got a lot of speed on, in it. I got a little bit creative with the supports on this one, and I'm very happy with the way this one turned out as we go up and down here. I might need to add a support there, get rid of that little thing there just to get supports going. This thing has to run four trains because it gets so popular. So I do have four trains running on this ride. Um, I'll show you in a second how this works. Um, it just kind of goes through all kinds of little bounces and bumps there. The next coaster probably will need to have inversions because we only have two coasters I think with inversions on it in this park. Uh, I think uh, right here uh, Plaza Phoenix and Aero Fighter are the only two with uh, inversions on. And um, over here is going to be my next area of develop. Actually, maybe this will be the next area of development. I'm kind of thinking of an Alice in Wonderland kind of themed area with maybe some kids' rides in here. Because for the most part in this valley, it is kind of flat. Uh, so kids' rides might be good here. And I've got a big plan for this final area of the park. And then this place will be filled. Completely. I might also put a coaster in here, too. I'm looking at a third wooden coaster. So we've got a Prosecutor, the Prosecutor, and Mountain Lion. And we're going to take a look at how that's um, a third one. I'm thinking a GCI might go in here. Also, I had to put in the uh, Escape Hatch ride. That's the only uh, pre-built ride in here because I was lazy, and I thought it fit in well. Um, but just on Centurion quick before we end the video... Centurion runs four trains, and it still has this kind of a queue. Uh, but luckily, and that's a 25 real-time minute queue. So it just shows how popular this ride is. But it's not the guest's favorite, because uh, people don't like waiting in line, and its satisfaction is pretty low because of that line. Um, but yes, it has to run four trains in order to get, those, get people through it. So... I did get creative with the um, support structure here, so... And like I said, it will kind of look, I think, a little bit better with more rides and stuff in this area, because we don't have a lot of flats in this park. Um, and I have some ideas maybe for another um, Alice in Wonderland-themed boat ride through here, like a... I don't know what I'll do with it yet, but... Um, I also maybe I'm going to put in another boat ride in this lake, so... Um, other than that... And then this section of the park's going to need a lot of work done to it, too. I'm actually really happy with the rating, because normally when you get a park this big, guests start getting kind of ticked. And to be honest with you, I think I've done a really good job with park infrastructure. Like, I've put a lot of like, food and drink in this park that um, make it so that people aren't, like, constantly trying to find a bathroom. And yet, I think since there's so many people in the park, yeah... I'm not hungry is the second most uh, popular comment. With This park is really clean and tidy. Only 73 people out of 3,773 need to go to the bathroom. Can't find a bathroom. And yeah, that one's just in a bathroom. That one's just in a bathroom. That one's right across from a bathroom. So, uh, considering I think we have like 30 bathrooms in this park. Uh, 28. That was close. 28 bathrooms in this park. So... And food stands, just look at all the... We have 90 food shops and stalls, so... The thing I'm worried about is just the park getting so much stuff in it that the game can't physically handle it anymore, and then it locks me out from building any more stuff, so... We'll see if that happens, but right now I'm very proud of this park. I still need to get better at building buildings and making it more aesthetically pleasing. I think I am going to build a new transportation ride, though, somewhere around here. Maybe a suspended monorail of some type through this section of the park over to maybe when this section opens up. Because I'm thinking maybe a North Pole kind of uh, winter section over here. So we'll see if that happens. But anyway, that's all for this update video. And here's just, again, another overview of the park if you wanted to kind of see how the whole park is. So we will see you. Oh, if you have any suggestions, please comment below.